This is CNN Breaking News. Hello and welcome to CNN Newsroom. Thanks so much for joining me. I am Brianna Keeler and we're following breaking news this hour. It is a violent attack at Ohio State University's Columbus campus. A federal law enforcement official believes there was one suspect, that that suspect is dead, and that this was predominantly a knife attack uh, where a car was also used at the beginning of the attack. The Columbus Fire Department says at least eight people have been injured. A shelter in place has just been lifted there at the university, and the scene, we are told, is now secure. But campus officials have told people to avoid the Watts Hall area. That holds the university's materials science and engineering building. The Bureau of Alcohol and Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives is on the scene right now, as well as dozens of local law enforcement officials. I want to bring in now CNN national correspondent Deborah Farrick and CNN senior law enforcement analyst Tom Fuentes. The real question here now, Deborah, is who is this uh, suspect who we're hearing from sources uh, has now been killed and, and why did this happen? Right, absolutely, and that's part of the ongoing investigation. What we can tell you is that uh, that law enforcement official telling us that they believe that there was one suspect, that one suspect now dead, and that he apparently used a knife, a very large knife. In the words of one eyewitness, it uh, looked like a machete, and apparently the gunshots that everyone heard was a quick-thinking police officer who responded, and after the crowd scattered, according to this eyewitness, that's when the police officer opened fire, shooting several times the eyewitness saying at least three times, and he credits this police officer with very quick thinking that possibly saved a lot of lives. But the gunman, Brianna, as you say, did do enough damage to send eight people uh, to the hospital with injuries. One of them initially was described as critical, but they're all characterized as non-life threatening. Uh, a car was involved. That's possibly why we saw this massive sort of SWAT, SWAT team sweep of this garage that everybody was sort of focused on. One individual was let out in handcuffs, but it appears he may have just been in the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, but according to the eyewitness, Brianna, uh, this suspect said nothing during the attack. He just had a crazy look in his eyes, according to the eyewitness. Um, but he was silent even as he was shot by that police officer, Brianna. And Tom Fuentes, we hear, and Deborah's talking about the reports of the shots fired. We don't necessarily know that this suspect even had a gun, right? right. Those shots that have been reported could have just been from police who were uh, the police officer firing at him. Exactly. If the witnesses uh, that saw him wielding a machete or other large knife uh, called 911, then the police would get the call and respond. If he was still at the scene with that knife and in the process of possibly stabbing or slashing people, then yes, the police would, uh, would shoot. And then witnesses outside of the building that heard shots fired didn't know if it was a shooter who was a bad guy or the police doing the shooting. What questions do you have as you look at what has transpired over the last hour or so? Well, clearly, do we have a garden variety psychopath that was doing this and we've had those in the past? Or was there some political motive? Was there somebody angry at the school or fellow students? Uh, or all the way up to and including terrorism, which we don't know yet. And we won't know that till they identify the suspect, uh, look at all of his social media and interview friends, neighbors, family, and get more background on who is this individual and what might have motivated him. All right, I'm going to have you, Tom Fuentes, and you, Deb Farrick, stand by for me. I'm going to bring in Anthony Falzerano. He is a senior at Ohio State University. He's joining me now on the phone. So, Anthony, I know that you were in class at the time uh, of this shooting, which may have just been the shooting by a police officer of the suspect. Tell us what you heard. Yeah, um, so that, that seems to be what everyone believes now, that it was just a cop. But we were sitting um, in class in lecture. It was just starting. And um, we heard we heard what is what appeared to be like a, a couple pops. Someone someone turned to me and he was like, "Did you hear that?" And I was like, "What?" And it, it sounded like just just pops or like fireworks or something in the background. And then out of nowhere, every single one of us got um, the Buckeye alert message, which is an automated system and it sends us text message and it says active shooter situation locked down on campus. And then um, our our teacher ran in and locked the door. And at the same time, we all saw a ton of we heard a bunch of sirens and a bunch of. Um, like cop cars all just started flooding towards that area, the corner of um, college, uh, college and 19th, I believe, or college and Woodruff. Now, could you see the area or could you just see the area mm -hmm. that police were responding to and where they were staging? So we could see we could see the area on the corner. I think it happened more towards the front of the building, but we saw the area that they ended up um, cordoning off and we saw all the cops and the, the fire trucks and the ambulances all, all rushing towards 
that area. It was. Uh, it happened very quickly that you received an alert. You said it was a matter of moments. So are you? Are you? How long do you think it was? A minute? Two minutes? I it had had to have been almost. Um, yeah, almost a minute or two. Um, we as as soon as we started seeing all the police officers, we got the text, which was, you know, very very thankful. You know, something you're thankful for because we got the door locked down immediately. No, it, it is uh, phenomenal how quickly uh, you were alerted, obviously, keeping a lot of people safe. What then happened, Anthony? Can you tell me? Uh, did everyone, uh, um, what, what sort kinda, of safety you know, measures did you like take? Everyone flooded around the window um, and started taking pictures and videotaping, and that's when, I, that's when I took a video from my Snapchat, and someone was like, you should put that on Twitter as well. Um, and so that's what I did. Um, and, then, and then everyone just was quiet and turned on their their phones and their computers to listen to the news um and then everyone was just you know terrified because there were reports that the entire campus was on lockdown and that there was a bomb threat and that there were um that they were looking for another active shooter that they were going to look through some parking garages or something and so it was it was it was pretty uh surreal and terrifying yeah and a lot of confusion obviously uh happens when when these things do transpire we heard reports that some students at Ohio State were barricading themselves in classrooms. Did you feel unsafe? Well, were you taking precautions? We felt uh, we felt pretty safe in our room. Um, I don't I don't know what the mechanism is or uh, or when they installed it, but but our room had a door. Uh, the professor had mentioned that she was the only one who could unlock it from the inside with like a code. Um, oh, so when okay. our door was closed and locked, it, it was it, we felt very safe. Um, Later, later, maybe 30, 45 minutes after the incident, someone had stepped outside to go to the bathroom, and there were, uh, they said, guards in the hallway that told them to get back in the room um, and close the door. So I don't, I don't know uh, where they were stationed. Maybe that was just because we were, we were close when, you know, we were in an adjacent building, so maybe that's why they were there. But. All right, Anthony Falzerano, thank you so much as we're learning from federal, uh, a federal source that the attacker at Ohio State University mainly used a knife and a car in the attack. We still don't know the motive. We don't know the identity of the suspect. I want to bring in now Congresswoman Joyce Beatty. She is the former senior vice president for outreach and engagement at Ohio State University. So, Congresswoman, you have a lot uh, of connections, of course, to the university. Uh, tell us about... Uh, your impression of what uh, what happened today and what your concerns are. Well, first, let me just uh, say thank you for reporting this. Needless to say, we are all very sympathetic about what happened. But if there can be good news in this, it is that uh, the university appears to be secured uh, now. Students uh, appear to be safe. Uh, I have had the opportunity to talk to the president of the university, Dr. Uh, Drake. It appears that there was a car that drove into uh, a crowd of people and caused some orthopedic uh, injuries. We're not sure if that is eight or nine people at this time. Four of them are in our OSU Wexner Hospital and surrounding uh, hospitals. Uh, also, it was reported that the multi-agency police that were involved were very timely, very responsive, and, and very helpful. What we don't know is what was the motive, uh, the why uh, behind this. But at this point, it is my understanding that uh, at least one, and if there were two, uh, most of the injuries were from a, a stab wound uh, that occurred, and uh, one of the shooters, well, we're saying shooter, but we're not sure, uh, so let's call him uh, one of the individuals who caused the injuries, uh, was apprehended by the police, uh, I've been told from some reports. Wait, can you repeat that last that last part, tell me? That... It, it has been reported on some of the lo local news stations. I did not get this from the um, from the school that uh, they thought there was a shooter, but we can't determine if it was a shooter involved or if okay. it was actually the police making uh, yes. the shot. Uh, okay, that's the, right. They're shooting the shooting that police officer who shot the suspect. So I I'm wondering, well, Congressman, if you suspect so, has been killed. Yeah. Yeah. So you so you were getting that update. Is that coming from the university? Is that coming from the university that the scene is secured, that the yep. multi-agency police, and that it was 
uh, a vehicle that drove into a crowd and that eight or nine of the students appeared to have stab wounds. Okay. Uh, and that is what they have reported. They are comfortable that the university is secure. Uh, and it tells you another thing, the alert system that they put in place certainly is working. From the one student who I talked with, they said they felt safe and that they, they were advised because they got the alert system. Certainly. No, and that's what we're hearing from students. In fact, I think a lot of us remember, uh, you know, almost 10 years ago covering Virginia Tech where it was two hours Absolutely. before an alert went out. And we hear that students got this alert. Everyone got alerts on their text uh, by text on their phones before they even had police arriving at the scene. So that's Absolutely. certainly uh, very, very good news. Uh, Congresswoman, stay with me. Uh, I, I want to bring in our law enforcement analyst, Tom Fuentes. Uh, and then I'm, I'm going to bring you back in as well. But that's a really good point that this alert allowed people to stay in place. We heard from one student doors that were locked from the inside. These are key lessons that have been learned over time. Absolutely. Uh, one of my daughters was down the hall from the first two people killed right. in the Virginia that's Tech right. shooting. And what happened in that case is that the young female student had just taken out a restraining order on an individual she was dating who ultimately had nothing to do with it. But that's what the police started pursuing until they established that that individual is 50 miles away at a construction site. Um, by that time, the shooter had gone back on campus, went into the engineering building, and then shot an additional 30 people plus right. himself. So. And when the alert went out, it was just missing details. So it, we're, right. we're certainly seeing that there's a little more responsiveness. Congresswoman, I want to ask you about a report that we're hearing from a 20-year-old student there at Ohio State. And he says that he was there when a man pulled a knife outside between Kofolt Laboratory and Watts, uh, the Watts Building, uh, that science and engineering building that we're talking about. He said that he was there where the man pulled the knife. It was a large knife. He started chasing people around, trying to attack them. Uh, he said there were so many people. Luckily, there were so many people. He couldn't focus on one target. I didn't see anyone get stabbed, but I saw the police officer take down the stabber. He waited till everyone was clear, and the stabber clearly wasn't stopping. Took three shots to take him down. Stabber had a crazy look in his eyes. And this uh, young man saying that the attacker appeared to be an African-American male in dark clothing. Is, is that meeting the description uh, of the attacker that you've heard about from officials there? Uh, other than the physical description, it does... Uh match what I was told by the university that a person in a car got out, did start stabbing uh, individuals with what we're calling some type of large knife and appeared to have orthopedic injuries to eight or nine. Uh, we're not sure of the exact numbers. At no time did I know the race or ethnicity uh, okay. of that attacker. Okay. All right, Congresswoman Joyce Beatty, thank you so much. We certainly appreciate you uh, sharing information with us. Very helpful as we learn uh, about what, what happened there. So what, what we're taking away from what she said was that it started with a car, uh, the suspect driving into a crowd, it appears. This is what she's hearing from the university. And that there were eight to nine that caused orthopedic injuries, so we would expect broken bones or some, something uh, the like. And then there were eight to nine uh people who seem to suffer stab wounds. And that seemed to be the predominant injury among, uh, among folks who had to be transported to the hospital. What do you take away from that? Well, it sounds, again, like uh, an individual that just was killing anybody or trying to hurt anybody that he could come across. And again, it's going to take uh, getting his identity and doing the background on him, his social media, what he has said to friends and others. And oftentimes, uh, you know, someone suffering extreme sociopathology also has an extreme degree of narcissism. So if they're going to do all this, they want everybody to know that they're doing all this and uh, you want to make themselves famous in the process. So if that's the case, you'll have uh, social media postings by the person. You'll have him tell possibly close friends, neighbors, if he's a student, fellow students, others, that he's about to do something and become famous. All right, Tom Fuentes, thank you so much for your insight. We're going to continue to follow this throughout the hour. Still ahead, though, today's other important story, all eyes on potential candidates for the top spots in the Trump administration and the big controversy surrounding one of the biggest names on the list.